Good afternoon. I want to spend a few quick minutes to talk about broadleaf weed control in soybeans for Fairbolt and Freeburn County in Minnesota. So, so far in 2020, we had a really good start to the year. Uh, a lot of soybeans went in the ground uh, end of April, beginning of May, and we had dry conditions which allowed for everyone to get a good chance to spray their pre-emerge herbicides. Um, in this field, we did see, uh, we got a little dry um, in the beginning of May, and we did see some broadleaf weeds starting to emerge, but with the rain over the weekend, we did get some pullback, and uh, it looks like it started to knock those weeds out. Any of the pre-emerge herbicides, uh, residual, you know, typically 21 to 30 days is what you're gonna get. Um, so I would think uh, by the end of May here, beginning of June, for those products to start to lose their effectiveness. Um, one thing uh, about controlling weeds, especially in soybeans, is it's always a moving target year to year. Uh, typically, what I like to do is look back to past years um, and see what was effective and, and how we can use what we know um, going forward. So just take a couple seconds here to talk about um, 2018 and 2019, the two years previous to this. We had pretty late springs. A lot of soybeans went in end of May, beginning of June, as well as the pre-emerge herbicides. And then we post sprayed them um, with either Liberty, Extend, uh, Flexstar uh, towards the end of June. So we were well within that control range of that pre-emerge herbicide. Then if you look back to uh, 2016 and 2017, we're more similar to this year. Uh, we got, got in early, late April, early May, pre-emerge herbicides went on. And then we waited until the end of June to make our second application. There was a lot of escaped weeds those two years because the weeds were just too tall um, for, for the Flexstar, Dicamba, Liberty products to be effective into June and or, uh, with those larger weeds. So 2020 is setting up more similar to those two years. So I, what I want everyone to consider is the possibility of adding in a third pass. In 2016 and 2017, a lot of growers sprayed three passes, but their third pass was a rescue pass in August. Rescue passes are typically expensive, they're limited on their um, effectiveness, and they can cause uh, yield damage. So what does that third pass look like? In some fields, um, that have weed issues that might be spraying the entire field. In other fields that might just be uh, fence lines, headlands, low-lying areas that typically have higher weed pressure. Uh, with that added pass here, beginning of June, I like to use a, a residual um, to layer it in with our pre-emerge. So I'm gonna run through kind of the four main uh, herbicide uh, um, systems we use right now in this area and kind of some options as far as layered residuals. Uh, the Round Array 2 Extend, um, in, my, in my mind, is a no-brainer. Um, your next pass should be um, that Dicamba product um, at the beginning of June. In Minnesota, we have a June 20th cutoff date, so it gives you a lot of time to get that product applied. I like spraying it by itself with no tank mix partners, herbicides. Uh, I feel like the, the herbicide itself is more effective that way. Um, you do get some good residual when you clean up any broad leaves. Um, and then I come back, I would suggest coming back end of June uh, with uh, uh, your Roundup or glyphosate, um, a residual product uh, like an Everprex or Parallel or a Dual, and your volunteer corn control killer. Uh, Flexstar applications. What I would probably recommend if you're gonna use Flexstar is spraying that product, or spraying a um, Everprex or a, a dual or, par or parallel type product as your, your layered residual, and then following up end of June with, with Flexstar. So it's a little tricky. I know um, there's a lot of uh, Round Ready to Extend acres that, that every year get sprayed with, with Flexstar. Um, because we run out of time. In my opinion, if you have, if you're gonna spray Flexstar or Round Break to Extend and you're gonna tank mix them, or tank mix those two products with other herbicides, if it's windy on 
June 10th and you can't spray extend, you should be posting those soybeans with Flexstar at that time. Um, because if you wait till the end of the month without a residual herbicide, the end of June without a residual herbicide and try to spray Flexstar, uh, you'll have limited success. Um, the Liberty scenario, and we can spray Liberty through R1. Um, I know a lot of guys like to spray it late um, to clean up uh, weeds past R1. Um, that does do some some yield damage even though uh, sometimes we don't think it is but it does. Um, so add that residual herbicide now um, and try to post the end of June with Liberty. Uh, the E3 is a kind of a totally different beast because you can spray um, the 240 choline or the Enlist, Enlist 1 through um, the end of R2 which is full bloom so it does give you a longer window um, probably into the first couple weeks of July to spray that herbicide but if we want to maintain effectiveness on on those technologies we need to layer residual in there um, if you're dead set you're not going to spray spray a third pass you're only going to spray two um, the pre and then a post I strongly urge starting that, that post-submerge application earlier than you normally would um, and adding the residual component to that, that tank mix. So uh, I know uh, some guys with, with custom application, you know, three, three passes just isn't in the cards. Uh, I would try to get that uh, applicator to do my second pass um, June 10th to, to June 20th at the latest. And I think you'll have the best, best results that way. Um, my biggest biggest point to this, if you're gonna, if you're someone who can't stand looking at broadleaf weeds in, in August or the end of summer, and you're someone who, who would go out and do a rescue, um, do your rescue now. Um, it's gonna be more cost effective. You're gonna have better control. Um, you're not gonna do as much damage uh, to your crop, um, and, and it's just gonna it's gonna be a better option um, if if you're someone who's willing to to uh, um, spend the money on inputs anyway. Um, corn herbicide, uh, you know, this video is mostly about soybeans, but the only thing I want to say on, on corn is be aggressive now with your, especially with your rates, try to be at the top end, uh, of your rates for residual. A lot of corn is going to get its post application, uh, here in the next, uh, next week or two. Um, it's going to be fairly small still. So try try to stay at the upper end of that range because you got a long summer and you're going to need need residual control and it's going to help you out on your soybeans the next year. Um, when I talk about layering residuals and hopefully everybody can see this but uh, it's not to scale but it's from from Iowa State University so this is a this is from 2015 um, I think this illustrates the layered residual uh, pretty well um, the side column here is, is water hemp um, per meter squared. Uh, the bottom is, uh, is the time, so starting at April 24th uh, through July 8th. Um, so, and these dotted lines here are water hemp emergence. So by, by uh, June 1, we typically think we're gonna have 80% of wa the water hemp that are gonna emerge are gonna emerge. Uh, by July 1, 98% of those water hemp are gonna emerge. This red line indicates uh, a pre-emerge herbicide that was sprayed um, right before or after planting. This dotted line across here is, is what you need for a lethal dose. So you can see, um, if we sprayed that pre-emerge on, on April 24th, we're gonna run out of activity on June 1 when the water hemp's gonna be about 80% emerged. If we layer our residual, sometime between now and June 1, we can carry that lethal dose out to July 1. In years when we don't uh, get planted so early, and we might not get planted till the end of May, beginning of July, this foundation pre has a long enough window uh, to maintain a lethal dose um, out to 98% water hemp emergence. So um, every year is different. Uh, this one, uh, I think uh, planting early might add some bushels at the end of the year, um, but unfortunately it's going to add some weed pressure too. So 
Um, next week, I think we're going to be out uh, doing some stand counts and evaluating emergence. Uh, we're going to use the drone and do some uh, stuff with Corteva Flight, which is a uh, which is an app um, with uh, through Corteva uh, that we can use to uh, can't count stands from the air um, to get an evaluation to see what our real uh, uh, yield potential is. So uh, I'll try to send these out once every every week, two weeks, uh, depending on what's happening. But uh, if anyone ever has any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Thanks.